Hi, this is Henning from Flicknormals.com and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can bring a model in ZBrush with um, topology, UVs, volumes, and multiple subtools directly into Painter without having to go through any third-party software like Blender or Maya. Before we get into that workflow though, I want to talk to you about our brand new introduction to an anatomy course. This course is perfect for artists who want to learn anatomy without having to go through crazy amounts of anatomy books or having to learn Latin in order to sculpt characters. The course is 16 hours long and you'll basically learn everything you need to know about anatomy to get started. We were using ZBrush, but you can of course follow along in any other sculpting software. So definitely check out Introduction to Anatomy, I think you'll really like it. Now back to the tutorial. The model we have here has been retopologized, so you can see we have a nice topology for him. We can see that we have two subtools as well, and the model has been UV'd over multiple UDIMs, like you can see here in Blender. So we have four UDIMs for this model, and this is exactly how this looks in ZBrush as well, and this is also exactly how we want this to look in Painter. The workflow is quite simple. First, we merge everything together into one subtool then we decimate it, then we export it from ZBrush, then we simply just import it into Painter. So the first step is we are going to make sure that we are at the highest subdivision level for our model. In this case, we have around uh, six or seven subdivision levels, depending on tool, total of 6.7 million. Then we go to Subtool, Merge, and just make sure the UV is enabled. If UV is not enabled, it's going to delete your UVs, which obviously would not be great. Then we hit merge visible. This might just take a second. And there we go. Now this has been merged. The higher poly count, the longer this is going to take. This model here is originally 65 million polygons, which is quite bonkers. The reason you also want to decimate your model is because Painter gets very sensitive when it comes to higher poly counts. So I prefer to make the polygon quite low, even something like 20,000 polys is quite good because this gets very heavy in Painter, particularly if you're dealing with multiple UDIMs and a lot of different layers. So here we have our model now. You can see that this is exactly the same as this one here because we haven't decimated it yet. Then we go to C plugin, just dock this over to either side. That doesn't really matter. And then we have decimation master up here. For decimation, it's very simple. We just have to make sure that freeze borders is enabled if you have any borders in your model. This would be things like holes in your model. You might have that under, like inside here, for instance. Then you definitely want to make sure that keep UVs is enabled. And then we can use the presets down here. This is what I prefer to use. In this case, we're going to set this to 75K, but you can just change this to whatever you prefer. So 75K and then hit that button. And now this is going to take some time. And there we go, our model is now a very comfortable 75,000 polygons, as you can see up here in the top right. So this is going to be quite simple to work with in, or quite comfortable to work with rather, in Painter. Now, the way Painter works when it comes to different texture sets is that each material is going to be each texture set. So traditionally, what you do is you would export this guy to something like Blender or Maya. Then you would assign a material to it. Doesn't really matter what material, as long as it's a material. Then you would name that material. You bring this into Painter, and now you can very easily just get texture sets. Like that's going to be done automatically for you. The problem is if we export this as is, this is not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to assign polygroups to this. Hit Shift and F, and now you can see the polygroups and. And then you can go to auto groups. You can also find auto groups under tool, polygroups, and auto groups right here. This is simply going to create one polygroup per independent mesh. So we have two horns, this is going to be two different pieces. So we have three in total one, two, and three. Then control shift click on the main piece, like so. Then we can control shift drag outside the model, like so very intuitive in ZBrush, and then we just hit Control w Control w is fantastic, but this is going to create a new polygroup for everything that's currently selected. So Control w and now we have different polygroups for that. So now we only have two. Then we have to go to our C plugins. This is going to be here by default, so there's nothing to download. FBX, export and import. And then we have to go under our options right here and simply enable poll groups as mats, which means now that each poll group, it's just gonna be a separate material, which again means that each poll group, it's going to be its own texture set. Of course, you will have to figure out this before 
you do any kind of settings or polygrouping here, which texture sets you actually want. This is something you'll have to figure out, preferably when you're UV mapping your character. Then you have a setting here right on the bottom as well. This is where you can change the normal smoothing as well. So if this is set to 100, that means it's going to be full smoothing and zero, it's going to be no smoothing. So zero is going to look like this because there's no normal smoothing at all in ZBrush. And we are just going to be setting this to a hundred and then we go export. Then you give it a name, hit save. And then we jump into Painter. So in Painter, we go to File, New, and then we simply have to select our asset. Select your asset and hit open. And you don't really have to change anything here. You just have to be sure that UV tile workflow is enabled. This should be enabled by default. And of course you have to change your template based on what you're doing. In this case, Blender starter asset is perfectly fine and the resolution you can always change later on. Then you hit okay. And now you can see that we have our asset in Painter. Now what you have to do is you have to go to texture set list and just drag the layer list down a little fiddly right here. And you can see that the naming of it is just generic. It's just based on the file name because the polygroups only, of course, gave it a material. It didn't actually give it a name, but this is easy enough to fix. We just double click on this and then we just call this head and we call this horns. And now we have texture sets that have been named correctly. So now we can go in here, we can just hide this and we could uh, unhide it, hide this, and there we go. We can now go in and we could do whatever we need to this. So we can get in, just texture the asset as we see fit. And um, that's really it in terms of setting it up. Now I want to show you a, another tip as well that's related to this as well. So don't close the video just yet. This is actually a really handy one, which I've been using a lot. It's relating to how you can create ID masks really fast. So back in ZBrush, we have our high poly model that's around 4 million polygons. Whenever you're texturing, you keep using the same masks over and over again. So it's often handy to use an ID map for this. But painting this in Painter can be quite tedious and you definitely can't make anything procedurally inside Painter that you can actually use properly for this. So what I prefer to do is I actually prefer to paint this in ZBrush myself. So just pick a very saturated color. This can be just a red color. Go to color and fill object. And now this is just going to fill this with beautiful red. Now just make sure this is very saturated so it's easy for Painter to pick this up. And then we're just going to be painting a few different masks here. I'm going to be time lapsing this because this is uh, just tedious <laughs> and it just takes a bit of time to do. There's nothing fancy here. The only thing you do, you just select a different color like so. Uh, over here, you can also go in a color if you want a slightly bigger a color picker like so. And then you just pick a different color for certain areas. And there we go. Now keep in mind, this is done in around one minute and you should definitely spend more time on the real ID map mask whenever you're creating this for production. Now we just have to go over to C plugin, same as before, and we are going to be using a different plugin this time. So instead of the FBX export or decimation, we are going to be using the multi map exporter. The only thing we have to enable here is texture form polypaint. And we can keep this very low rest because this is just a simple gradient of colors. And also we frankly don't have a lot of polygons to play with here because we only have like less than 4 million. So using a 1K map here is totally fine. Just make sure that flip V is enabled. Then we just have to go to file name before we create all maps and just make sure that the UV tile format is indeed enabled right here because if not it's not going to display the or rather output the proper units so then we go create all maps then we go to our um, folder you can just whatever name is doesn't really matter for now then just hit save and there we go this timer here you can't trust for a second this does not take 22 seconds but that's a discussion for a different time now, before we import this into Painter, we just have to rename these guys real quick because it doesn't really recognize this unless there is an underscore or a dot in front of the of the location here of the UDIM. So I'm just going to change this real quick. And there we go. Now, the only thing you have to do is you have to take one of them and drag it into the asset library here. Like so, drag it in here. And now Painter is going to figure out that this is a UDIM range. Just make sure this is set to texture and import this to the current project. And I can see down here that this has indeed been set up with four UDIMs. This is one that I actually messed up right before when I was testing up. What we're seeing here is actually a failed attempt at importing because here we just have TM and then a number, while here you can see it's TM and we have 
the the dot in it. So if we don't have the dot or an underscore, it's not going to work here as well. This is an earlier test as well. Here I'm using underscore, so that's also going to work. Now what we have to do is we just have to be sure we are under the right texture set. Then we go to texture set settings, and then we just drag this guy under the ID map like so. Now nothing is going to change here at all because we haven't actually changed anything. We just set up our ID map. Now under layers, what we can do is we can now very quickly create different colors or different um, roughness values and such based on this. This is very useful whenever you're dealing with roughness maps. So let's say for instance that we have a gray map right here. We can make it a bit darker, so C, C, C. Then we can make a new fill layer. Then we just go up here, alt click on the roughness like so. And then we can just duplicate this a few different times and we can hide them. Right click, add mask with color selection. And now this is going to give us a mask with a color selector right away. So this is very quick and easy to do. Then we just hit pick color. And now we, for instance, we can set this to be the nose. And if we just set the roughness all the way to uh, to max here so we can see, properly see what's going on. Now you can see that we very quickly created a roughness mask for this, but this is too strong. So we can go in here, we can change the, um, the hardness, for instance, to be softer. We can change the tolerance as well to fit whatever values you want. And now we have a mask for this. We can do the same thing for the other ones as well. We can go create add a mask with color selector. We can make this for the eyes, for instance. And now you can see how fast this is to create masks like roughness masks and such. So this is a really cool tip. And the more you uh, you refine this mask, the more you refine these settings, the quicker this is going to be. You can also do something similar to this with um, smart masks as well, which is something I often do when it comes to my characters, where I simply start off the project by painting these smart masks, right click, and then just create smart mask from these guys. And now these are gonna pop up over here. So now you can very easily just drag this over. But this is just a nice little tip for you if you want to create the ID map directly in ZBrush. This asset here was also from a tutorial series that we launched last year called Character Portrait Masterclass, where you get to learn how to create this whole character from scratch, including a similar workflow that we just covered in this video. So if you're interested in that, I highly recommend Character Portrait Masterclass. We take this character from basically just a, a sphere and bring him all the way through texturing painter, look dev and shading in Blender, rendering in Blender, hair and fur in Blender, retopology in Blender, sculpting in ZBrush, and all of that. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see more content like this and you want to help us with the YouTube algorithm, which is pesky as ever, it would be awesome if you could leave a comment and like the video and also subscribe to our channel. And we'll definitely create more painter videos in the future. So thank you so much for watching.